Howdy folks, Kirk and Jason here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today, what we want to do is explain to you guys who get your house shot with insulation. Now the insulation usually they'll go on the outside. They'll go between the studs and fill it up. Um, I'll also show you too how to patch these properly. Uh, these guys here, this one is protruding. I mean, you put this on and it wiggles. I'll show you how to fix that kind of stuff. When I was working years and years ago, um, I recall, I didn't know how to texture. And texturing takes a while. And uh, anyway, I'm gonna get back to that story. Let me show you this. This one is really out. It's really protruding. This one is flush. This one is really out. This one is flush. I'll show you how to do the flush ones first. Then I'll get back to that story. Okay, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take some, uh, you look at the sand grit here. Anybody know what kind of sand grit that is? Can the camera do a close up? That is 2030, but it's just not knocked down. So what we do is, I'm gonna do the two flat ones first. Now, watch if I try to do that with this one. You see, there's where the high spot is. And watch if I try to do it this way, even if I take it sideways. There's where the high spot is. How do you fix that? Put a little bit just on the tip of the trowel. That's what my story was about. About uh, 40 years ago, I was doing a job and I was working with my buddy, Fred Smith. And Fred Smith is a master plaster. He worked for Danny Smith, his brother, for, well, he just retired about two years ago. He worked for him for, uh, I'd say, 40 years. And I remember getting a side job, so I was doing a side job, and I did the walls, and they were kind of crooked. Back then, I was still learning, and he, I called him. I said, hey, Fred, can you do the texture? And this is the kind of wall I had. It was crooked. Uh, it was like some of these holes. And he looked at it, and he says, you're learning, bro. But let me show you how to fix it, and that's exactly what I'm showing here, where if you go straight up and it leaves these hollow spots here, just put a little bit on the tip of your trowel. And it doesn't matter if you're using a, a pull trowel like the 20 inch I got, or you're using a square trowel. That doesn't matter. But anyway, let me show you what, we're, what we have done. Number one, when you do something like this, get yourself a, a, an extra rough roller, a fat nap roller. These, yeah, it costs a few bucks more, but it's an inch and a half. You dip it in your bonding agent and you go all the way around it. I didn't expect this, but I told him, man, I can fix that for you. And what you do with the bonding agent is you just put it on. Here's the hole, but go far around it. That way, if your texture exceeds the hole, then it'll still adhere. Without this bonding agent, it won't adhere forever. So you got to do the bonding agent. All right, guys, we had a little bit of audio problems. This heat, man, it, uh, leave the camera in the sun, it'll beat it up. Anyway. Uh, I was explaining this area here. I hadn't finished when Jay said, oh crap, yeah, uh, we lost audio. This guy here, he was okay. It's the same guy. Then they had another guy come here, and then this guy. So this guy only had an idea what he was doing because he used the wrong grit. So you can see it right here. Um, can you zoom in right there, Jay? Uh, I already skimmed all of that. I thought I was on camera, but it wasn't. Okay, this finish here is he spread it, then he took a float and he brought the sand out or the aggregate. He brought it that out. But if you look at the existing, they don't have that. All they have is a texture spread right there with a, uh, a texture on it. So they, they put the base coat, then a texture on this. So while this is here, I'll, I'll finish doing what I started. Only on camera. With the, bit, with the audio now. Uh, what I like to do, guys, is go over from here to here at least six inches. It's called feathering, feathering it in. All right, one more hot pull, and that should do it. Now what I'm going to do is get this top in real quick.
I don't notice a whole bunch of stuff, guys, but I do notice the texture. Uh, like my girl and I were having lunch somewhere. <laughs> she said, that's a pretty cool piano right there. And I said, where? She said, right in front of you. And I thought, wow, I didn't even notice it. I'd make a lousy detective, but I can see a texture. Any wall, anywhere, any state, any... I could always do, do that. And by the way, I don't know if I said this because we lost the audio for just a minute. There's no such thing as anybody being able to get this perfect uh, with a skip trial finish within a skip trial finish. And I'll show you what the one guy did wrong. He took a float and he floated his, even with this lighter sand, you can see that's a sand finish. Their base coat doesn't have a sand finish, so don't do that, guys. I'll only use that float where if you have a dual finish. I will use the float on the edges. Okay, so the edges, this is the edges. There's where I'll use the float to feather that edge in as best as possible. If you can feather an edge in, guys, you are on your way. That distinguishes how well it's going to blend in. So I feather that in, feather that in, feather this in too. Get the top once. And because this is going to be painted, does it matter that I got a few pieces that show? Not really. If it did, I'd hit those right now. So that's what you do. And since I don't want any more problems with the camera, I'll show you something. <coughs> Okay, this texture here. I got one more big slobber right here. Now notice it again, if I put enough texture on here and I go straight up, this is gonna be hollow, this is gonna be hollow, this, this. Why? Because this protrudes like a half inch. So here's what you do. Okay, so you can see where it's protruding. Now you just fill up the trout on the toe or even the heel and fill that, that hollow spot in. What's the beauty of a skip trial, guys? Anybody know? Anybody care? It hides everything. It, skip trials are very forgiving. You name it, it hides it. So now I'm just gonna uh, put the skip trial to match theirs right here over this nasty patch somebody did. And the idea is, look at their finish. If they took it off the top of the hawk, take it off the top. If they took it off the bottom, take it off the bottom. If they took it from the middle like this, you know the difference because it makes a difference in your texture. So I'll show you just right here and I'm going to wrap it up because it is already about a hundred degrees. When they said that we were going to have a heat wave, I thought, yeah, right. I'll believe it when I see it. I see it. We're in it. So I'm going to keep going here in texture and feather all this in. Then we have the average hole guy, or the average holes, about 100, 150 in your house. So again, just ask the fellas, say, hey, who does your stucco work? And if they say, well, you have to do it, this guy didn't know he had to do this. So you've got to pay somebody like me or somebody like one of these guys and go through a whole bunch of people to find the right guy that knows how to do it. You can't understand how to do it unless you've been doing it for years, guys. Anyway, my name is Kirk. Jason is on the camera. We thank you folks for watching as usual. We'll see you guys on the next one. All right, folks. As always, we want to say thank you for watching. If you like what we put out, please like and subscribe, and we'll keep making content for you. And as usual, we'll, we'll see, see you on the next one. one.